Hey what's up everyone, Julian here, hope you're all good and welcome back to another Flask video and today I want to talk a little bit about task queues and show an example of a task queue in action. So sometimes we need to process some data that's not really suitable um, to be part of that request response cycle. So typically a client will make a request to your application, your application will do something, maybe process some data or pull some data in or go ahead and run some kind of function and then return a response to the client. But sometimes that's not practical, it's not ideal. Maybe you're doing some kind of data analysis or you're working with large files like images, video, audio, you need to do some processing or you just need to send some emails and it's not an immediate priority to send a response back to the client. Well, we can do that with a task queue. So I think the best thing is to show you a quick example of a task queue in action, and then we can go ahead and look at the code. So over here, I've got a terminal up and running and the Flask development server running here in the browser. And you'll see we've got this message. And if I go ahead and refresh this a few times, you can see we get a different response every time and it's coming back to us immediately. And you can see here we've got a message saying 11 tasks in the queue. And if we look over in the terminal, you can see that something's happening. And these are our tasks which are being executed in the background. So, you know, we hit a URL in our Flask app, we get an immediate response. And whatever task we want to execute has been pushed off to our task queue and is happening in the background. So this is great. You know, imagine you've got something like some image processing, you're, you take a, uh, or you allow a user to upload an image, or you know maybe it's uh, some software that you're building for yourself. You upload an image, and let's say you want to make five kind of replicas of that image at different resolutions or different sizes. You know, you want a thumbnail, you want a massive one, and a few more in between. We probably don't need to do all of that processing and then return some kind of result to the client. You can just say, you know, image received and then go ahead and send that off to a background task that can then go ahead and actually do that processing for you. So there we go. We've got our task queue up and running and we're getting an immediate response here from our application. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. And you can see here, we've just got a very, very simple single page Flask app. We've got one root and we've got one function. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and just select everything and delete it for now. And in our terminal, if I go ahead and stop the Flask app, clear the terminal, and I'm going to go ahead and rm-r. So we'll go ahead and remove the virtual environment and deactivate it, and we'll start from scratch. So we're going to create a virtual environment and install a few packages. So we do that with python-m, b-e-n-v, and then the name of the environment. And for this task queue, we're going to be using Redis as our message broker. And the message broker kind of sits in between your application and the task queue and just bounces messages in between to tell the task queue when a new, uh, a new task has been added to the queue. I'm saying task and queue way too much in this video already. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let's just run. Oh, first things first, actually, we need to activate. So source env bin and activate and if we run pip list you can see we don't have any packages so we're going to pip install redis flask and the task queue that we're going to use is called rq and it's a really nice um it's a really nice library a really nice package and it just lets us get things done really quickly and i think it's really really simple to use and it's a really nice uh, package as an introduction to task queues you may have heard of Celery, which is another very, very popular task queue, uh, distributed task queue in Python. And, you know, that's another great option as well. But for now, we're just going to work with RQ. So we've got our um, we've got our packages, we've got Flask, we've got Redis, and we've got our RQ. So let's jump into our app here. So we need to do a few imports. So from Flask, we're going to import Flask. Let's spell import right import flask and we're going to import request as well because we're going to use that to collect some information from a query string we need to import redis so we just do import redis 
and we need to import our queue. So for that, we're going to do from our queue import queue capital Q. First thing we're going to do is create our app. We do that with Flask app and pass it Dunder name. Next thing we need to do is connect to our Redis instance. Now, I'm not going to cover installing Redis in this video. There's loads of tutorials out there to get that, but I'm using the Windows subsystem for Linux and Redis works absolutely fine. If you're using Mac, I think you can just install it with Homebrew. Um, if you're using WSL, you can install it with um, apt-get and just go ahead and search for a tutorial or a guide on how to install Redis on your machine. So the next thing we need to do is connect to our Redis instance. So we do that with r equals redis dot redis capital R and a set of parentheses because we're going to connect to using just the default connections with no kind of password off. Probably in production you want to use a password with Redis, but we're not going to cover that in this video. Next thing we're going to do is create our queue, and I'm just going to call it queue, and we do that with q equals q u e u e, and then we pass it our connection. So connection equals R, and that's our connection to Redis. So that's everything we need. We've got Redis, we've got our connection, and we've created our queue. And the queue is, I mean, really it is what it says it is. It's a queue where we can push on tasks that we want the task queue to then execute. So how do we actually work with task queues? Well, we just write normal Python functions. Um, they can take arguments, they don't have to take arguments, they can return things, they don't have to return anything. So just any old Python function will do. So another thing actually that I did forget to import is time because we're gonna use the time package to just simulate some delay. So let's go ahead and create a function that is gonna be used to handle the tasks that we push onto the queue. And I'm just gonna call it background task. Really simple, really imaginative name. And it's gonna take one argument, which is n. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new variable called delay. I'm gonna set that to two. And we're gonna use this to just mock or simulate some delay or simulate a process taking a long time. So we'll just go ahead and print task running. And then we'll print uh, simulating second delay and this needs to be an f string and then we'll go and pass in delay so we got that and then all this function is going to do is just uh, return the length of n super super simple so what we'll do we'll throw in our delay time.sleep and that's going to take delay and then what we'll do we'll just print uh, the len of n and then just print task complete and then we'll just return len of n so really really stupid simple function but this is just to illustrate how we work with task queues what we're going to do in a uh, in later episodes we're actually going to use task queues in a more production style environment and we'll do some more interesting stuff like resizing images as a background task, uh, do some web scraping as a background task as well. So look out for them. So we've got our background task done um, or our function that's gonna use to handle the actual task itself. So let's go ahead and create our root. So we do that with app.root and this is gonna be slash task, which is gonna take a query string and we'll just call um, add task and then what we'll do if we have any arguments in the query string, so if request.args.get, and we're just gonna send a query string with um, n as a key. If request.args.get n, what we're gonna do is actually trigger our background task. So we'll do that with job. We'll create a new variable here called job. And then what we wanna do is push this onto our queue. And we do that with queue dot in Q and then parentheses and what we do we pass it a function and we pass it any arguments that we want to pass into the function so our function was called background task so we do that background task and then we pass it any arguments so any values for n we then pass in so I'm going to do 
request.args.get n. So, so the value for n in the query string. Then what we'll do is return an f string just saying uh, task and then curly braces added to q at and then another set of curly braces and then I'm going to do another set of curly braces tasks in the queue. So what I want to do is fill in these curly braces with a bit of information about the task that we just created. And we can do that with um, job followed by a dot. And then we've got some attributes of this job object that we could access. So we can do job.id. And that's going to give us the ID of the job. And we can do job dot enqueued at to give us a daytime object of when the job was added to the queue. And then another thing I want to do here is I want to get the amount of tasks currently in the queue. And we can do that with create a new variable. I'm just going to go to queue len and then I'm just going to call len and pass it our queue. So all we're doing here is just getting the length of our queue and storing that in a variable here called queue len. And we'll go and throw that into our f string. Now, if we don't get any query string, what we'll do, um, we'll just return no value for n. That will do us nicely. Now, the last thing we need to do is call cool. um, if thunder name is equal to thunder main app.run. What I'll do, I'll just put a bit of space in between here. So that is everything for now. We've created our app. We've created our Redis connection. We've created our queue by um, calling this queue class and then passing it the Redis connection. We've created a function, which is gonna be the function that handles our background task. And then we're adding that task to our queue with q.nq, which we then pass the function and any arguments that that function takes. So let's go ahead and get this up and running. So down here in the terminal, first thing we need to do is actually make sure Redis is started. So I do have Redis started here, but I'll go ahead and clear. And you do that on a Windows subsystem for Linux or on Linux, you do that with redis-server Redis and that should get you up and running. Obviously it depends on how you install Redis, whether you've got it running as a service, whether you install it with a Docker container, it's entirely up to you. Now the next thing we need to do, before we run our app, we need to spawn our worker process. So the worker process is a process that is separate from your app. So it's like a little mini kind of server or a service that's listening. Uh, it's listening out for any messages from Redis. So whenever we call uh, the q.nq, that's going to then send a message to Redis and then our worker is going to be listening and as soon as it gets that it's going to trigger. So we do that with RQ worker and you need to be make sure you need to make sure that you're in the same directory as your application. So go ahead and start that and you can see here we get a message just saying uh, RQ worker started and it's listening on the default. So let's go ahead and jump into the browser. Let's get rid of that query string. And I think we need to start our Flask app actually. Yeah, we do. So I can just do Flask run. Let's reconnect. And there we go. We get no value for n because we haven't sent a query string. However, if we do question mark n equals, let's just do hello. There we go. We get our message back. And if we look over in the terminal that's running our worker process, you can see if we go ahead and refresh this a few times, you can see we've now got 11 tasks in the queue and we've got our queue running in the background here, executing our functions. So this is all running in the background. We've got an immediate response here from our server and the task is happening in the background. So. Like I said, this is just a really quick and simple introduction to task queues with Flask using Redis and using RQ. And the documentation is, uh, I'll make it available, I'll throw it a link to them in the documentation. But the links for RQ are super easy to work with. And again, uh, 
there'll be some installation guides here on the Redis website. But like I said, it should be really simple to get up and running with Redis. Um, if you're on Windows, I highly recommend using the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, if you're on Mac, you can install it with Homebrew. So plenty of ways to get hold of Redis and get it up and running. So what else can we do? Well, I'm not gonna cover it in this video. I just wanted this to be a really quick introduction. Um, but we can do all sorts of cool and interesting things with queues. Um, we can create our own custom queues so we can give them different names. We can set kind of different priorities. We can set timeouts on tasks. So, you know, let's say you have a task and you know it should only take 10 seconds. You can set a timeout so that if there's any issues or it doesn't return, then you can just kill it and move on to the next one. Um, we can, I think what we're going to do in a future episode is separate out our tasks into their own separate file um, and we'll create a kind of more production ready flask environment which is going to inc include a, uh, a task queue in the background so we can you know create new files just containing our um, background task functions and then we can import them and call them from our flask roots um, there's also all sorts of cool things you can do with um, with RQ like creating using decorator syntax to create tasks again that's something we'll cover in a future episode but for now i think that's everything i want to cover so we can see our task queue is up and running we're getting an immediate response from the server whilst this gets executed in the background so i think in the next one we're going to um, be uploading some images and handing that off to a background process which is going to create different copies of that image at different resolutions i think we're also going to do one with a web scraper as well so you submit a URL for a form here in the uh, in the browser, and then that starts a background process, which is going to go and scrape a load of data from a website. And we're going to use Beautiful Soup and a few other interesting packages to work with web scraping. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it useful. If you've got any comments or questions, do leave them down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, then feel free to drop a like or subscribe. I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.